What's up everybody, welcome back to Toe Game Masters. Today we're going to show you how to create your own splitter. So just a quick background on this. This is probably our third or fourth splitter we've made for this car. We found that using Illuminolite is the best bang for buck um, in terms of weight and uh, sturdiness. So there are a bunch of other options you can use. Um, you can also use plywood, which is very sturdy but heavy. Uh, carbon fiber, which is super light but expensive. And then you have the medium here, which we're using Illuminolite with. And so what you see us doing now is putting back on the bumper and lining everything up uh, to make sure it all fits. With the bumper installed, we can go ahead and line up the Illumilite material to make sure it's straight to the bumper. I had a few videos of us installing the splitter diffusers and these initial cuts. However, the video files ended up being corrupt, so I don't have those. But essentially all you need to do is get a big piece of cardboard and place out the bumper and cut out the material as desired. As you can see here, there's seven nuts and bolts holding the carbon splitter diffuser. They're using Allen keys and so they sit relatively flat to the bottom. And here you can see the top and that's where the studs stick out. Alright, now let's line this up to the bumper and make sure it's straight. With the splitter lined up to the bumper, we can now mark off where we need to cut and create mounting points to the chassis mount the splitter. With the splitter lined up, we're going to create mounting holes for the professional awesome quick release system. Here you can see we installed a rib nut here. And we're going to create another one right next to it so that we can mount the brackets. And here's what their adjustable bracket looks like. We just use a regular 10 mil. With the first hole mocked up, we're going to go ahead and drill out the second hole. And we're going to go ahead and use a pin punch just to make sure the drill goes in straight. And then we're going to drill that out and put another rib nut there. We ended up adding additional two more on top of these later on. I just gave it a little bit more support and sturdiness. With the main bracket installed, we're going to install the quick release system. It's held on by three 10 mil. Here's a quick demonstration on how the quick release system works. So once you push that in, it locks into place. And then you a little bit of adjustment there. There's a safety lock there so you can't accidentally pull it back. Once you turn that, you can pull it quickly and it pops right off. Now that we have that mounted, we can go ahead and mark off where we need to drill into the splitter to make sure the mounting points line up correctly. We're going to drill one hole first just to make sure it lines up correctly and then we're going to drill an additional hole to hold up the splitter.
With the two mounting points installed, we can go ahead and put that back in and test out the quick release system. Note that we're still going to have two bolts holding the front of the splitter and then we're going to add an additional side support with the quick release split rods. Here's a quick demo of the quick release system. As you can see, it's strong enough to support the whole splitter by itself. And here you can see the splitter being held up by the bash bar as well as the quick release system. Here is a nylon washer with two metal washers on the bash bar and then you can see underneath it's an allen key hole. Uh, it sits relatively flat so you have two of those. I'm going to add a splitter rod on the sides here and then there is the quick release system. You can see it's pretty supportive here and again we're going to add two additional bolts to hold it up and give it a little bit more sturdiness. And this is also where the splitter diffusers come up. You can see uh, we made these out of carbon fiber. Here's a quick photo of the Professional Awesome quick release system as well as their splitter rods. As you can see, this helps hold the side of the splitter up and keeps it nice and snug on the bumper extension. I used the existing rib nut holes that I created earlier and used an L bracket there to hold up the splitter rods. And here's a photo from another view. You can see the L bracket here that holds up the splitter rods and the clevis pins that hold the quick release splitter rods. And this is what the splitter looks like on the car currently. Still needs some cutting. Here we mounted back the front bumper as well as the over fender extensions to make sure everything still lines up correctly. Now that the bumper is lined up, we're going to go ahead and make the final cuts as well as install some rubber seals to protect the leading edge on the splitter. Here's some photos of the splitter after the final cuts. Last thing we need to do here is add some rubber trim piece to make the splitter and bumper airtight. And this concludes our video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.